Whenever you act on any scripture, things are happening that you can. You're watching Atmosphere of Love. Coming up on Atmosphere of Love. Question that you were supposed to ask is what kind of seed did you sow? This fellow is so conceit and his thing is powdered, but you are not so in conceit. You're And your lasting result comes from work of ministry, ministering to people spiritually through the prayer ministry of the believer, ministering as a priest, bringing, causing things to happen for people without them knowing. Atmosphere of love. There are things you disagree with your spouse with. Do agreeably. Hello? You disagree? Agreeably. Otherwise, there's a problem. Okay, so people, because they disagree agreeably, they think they are not disagreeing. You are brainwashing yourself. <laughs> you are disagreeing, but you are disagreeing in a very pleasant manner. You are disagreeing how? Agreeably. Okay. What you're supposed to do, we have put that to work and it works. You're supposed to go back to God who gave you that spouse, do the work of ministry without that spouse knowing. Kneel down and pray for him or her, and you'll be shocked. What was a laziness attitude, a slow attitude, a weakness, suddenly will be no more. Hello? Will be no more. Why? Because the father is coming to the picture. The one who gave you that spouse has come into the picture. And he has the answers. Hello. Suddenly you see, the spouse will come and say, you know, I feel so bad. I just noticed that I've been so, somewhat, I've been living somewhat. I, 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 I feel so bad. I just want, I just feel I should change. Sometimes they may not even say it. Suddenly you just see them change. <laughs> and the most, the most common phrase that we, we used to say in my house is, did you see the Lord? <laughs> because, because only Him can cause very wonderful changes like that. Did you see the Lord? When we see things happening, wow, 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 without telling anybody, shoo, the thing just, ah, what happened? Did you see the Lord? <laughs> because only the Lord can make things happen like that. You know? Use the ministry of prayer. Use the ministry, work of the ministry, to minister in the family. My wife and myself, we have done it. We, uh, we, I mean, we are recipients and beneficiaries of work of the ministry. Before I got married, I did it. There are my three sisters. One is my niece, and two are my immediate younger ones. When I saw their friends, and saw what their friends were telling them, sharing with them, I knew that this is very critical. So I thought in my heart, Lord, have mercy, what's going to happen here? Because I knew that they may end up like their friends. Because I always teach young people, like me, and younger than me, friends are like staircase. Depends on which direction you want. They either take you or bring you down. Or like elevators. Lift. They either lift you up or they lift you down. Depends on where you want to go. So I saw that and it bothered me. I didn't go and tell them, see, <clears throat> I heard what your friend was telling you last night. It's not good. Don't do like that. You're a Christian girl. See, the Lord loves you and you love the Lord. If you do like that, soon you will have a boyfriend. And soon you'll be going here and there and here and there and you'll be acting like that fellow and like this fellow and like that. I didn't waste my precious time. I went and I did the work of the ministry. I was praying, I was praying, I was praying for them. And one day God spoke to me. I will not forget. God spoke to me. He told me. He said, don't fear. Don't worry. 
I have separated them from the corruption of this world. Actually, he used the word that I am conversant with in chemistry subject. He used the word scoop. To scoop is a method of separation. It's like filtering. He told me, say, I have scooped them from the corruption of this world. Peace hit my heart like thunderstorm. And I begin, and I started seeing it in their lives. They tell their friends, sorry, I'm not coming. I didn't tell them not to. Hello? Yes. I didn't tell them, that friend is bad. I saw her hanging around two boys yesterday. No, I didn't say that. It may be correct sometimes, but I'm telling you, lasting resort comes from work of ministry. Ministering to people spiritually through the prayer ministry of the believer. Ministering as a priest. Bringing, causing things to happen for people without them knowing. You pray for families, they don't even know you're praying for them. Because you've seen some lack in that family. I'm not talking about doing physical things, I'm talking about doing a spiritual responsibility. Come, let me show you something, what Jesus said. Let's see Luke 22, 23. Are you there? Well, let's see Matthew's Gospel. Pardon. <clears throat> 22, you should, <clears throat> you should know. <clears throat> you should know Jesus when he told uh, uh, Peter. He told Peter. I, I do have said it before, I want to show you in the scripture. He told Peter, he said that Satan desired to take you, to move you. He said, but I have prayed for you. He said, but what? what? I, have I have prayed for you. And when Jesus said that, it, re it revealed to me what is in all the uh, epistles that the apostles wrote. What, the, what, the, what we just read one, Ephesians 1, verse 16, I think, where he says, I cease not, I do not stop praying for you. I do not stop praying for you. Are there certain people in your life that you don't stop praying for? Not just because you love them, it's great to pray for people because you love them, but you see a need in their lives. And you don't even let them know. A, a precious grandmother among our miss was sharing with me, because Jesus went and told Peter that I prayed for you. When you are restored, restore your brethren also. Pray for them also. So it's a prayer chain. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. <laughs> okay. So uh, there's a precious grandmother among us who came to me and said, Pastor, I was praying for you and, and I saw this and amazing things she was seeing. She was seeing me... Uh, 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 Functioning in the ministry of the apostle, uh, which is fine, according to what God has committed. But then in this time, in the measure in which the apostles function in the book of Acts. Now that's wonderful. Hello? That's true Bible apostleship. Talking about the power of God. Talking about truths. Talking about teaching. Talking about walking in purity. Walking in the life of God. This may not sound so loud, may not sound so charismatic, but it is true. And the earlier you do it, the better results you'll have. And you'll see people changing around you. I saw all my family members change around me with the work of the ministry, praying for them. I told them the first time, I really did not remember. I really did not remember preaching a nice sermon to any one of them. I really did not remember telling them that if you don't receive Jesus Christ, you're going to go to hell. I really did not remember. 
But as a Christian, I think I preached. But I didn't remember preaching the nice sermon. But I remember praying for them. Boy, I do. I remember crying and praying for them. And they asked me, why are you crying and praying? And I told them, I'm praying for you. That's all? That's all you're crying and praying? <laughs> they did not know what shape in which they are. You know, that's the sinner for you. When I was a sinner, see, when I was a sinner, I, I thought I was fine. My mother is a choir mistress. My sister is a sister and choir mistress. So I am choir member. I am fine. I act dramas. I am cool, man. Fine. I get out of the church, act like a monkey, come back in the church, act like a saint. I'm fine. That's cool. <laughs> For me, the two things are the same. It's just that this is church monkey and the outside, <laughs> this is world monkey or whatever you may call it. You know, I'm fine. That's all. Until the Lord spoke to me. I heard his voice like you hear the voice of a friend next, sitting next to you. Until he spoke to me. And I did not take it at first. I laughed at what he said. But you know the story. I finally said, okay, I will do what he said. And when I said that, like something pop open, like a cock. My eyes pop open and I saw I was a sinner. And I couldn't stop crying and asking God for forgiveness. This is, you see, sinners don't know they are sinners. If they know they are sinners, they'll get saved. When I told, when I came to Bangalore, I told some family, some loved one, I said, so seriously, I said, I'm trying to get serious now because it's, it's funny. <laughs> it's already making me laugh before I want to laugh. I said, <laughs> very seriously, I wasn't smiling like this, pardon me. I said, <laughs> oh Lord have mercy. I was talking to that Lord. That one is very serious fellow. <laughs> so I, I was very serious, no room for laughter. So I told I said uh, the Lord can forgive <laughs> I said, the Lord can forgive you. Seriously I was saying it. The Lord can forgive you of your sin. Jesus can forgive you of your sin. The fellow said, Huh? <laughs> because I said Jesus. Huh? I, I said, Your sins. All your sins can be forgiven right now, washed away. Just if you believe, Jesus can wash it. I'm not a sinner. <laughs> Straight to my face, he told me. I'm not a sinner. You know what he may call a sinner? Someone had making uh, business, black money business, or doing some bad thing in court. That's a sinner for him. For him, he's not a sinner. He's a pious fellow. He's not a sinner. So he told me, don't talk like this to me. I'm not a sinner. Don't talk like this. Oh, I felt very embarrassed. I thought, he's not a sinner. <laughs> Thank God I'm strong in, in the truth of the gospel. But I thought, some people are not sinners. <laughs> like some others are. <laughs> because these sinners are so convinced they are not sinners. They're so convinced. They can even convince you that you are sinner. They are not sinners. <laughs> if you are not convinced. He says, sinner? I should not talk to him like that. Why am I talking like this? Sinner? <coughs> Saints, what can solve this problem? Work of the ministry. You cannot go and be saying, okay, watch, I'll prove to you that you are a sinner. <laughs> no, 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 don't prove. Take their name to your closet and begin to pray, talk in tongues, demand your salvation. Don't forget what the sister said. Heart prayer, NS. You're watching Atmosphere of Love. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. You are a homemaker. You have to build your home. But with your words, you are already breaking your home. Your words are so powerful, women. God made you talkative so that you will help the man to accomplish his vision by your words. Not to go and break his house and moreover, the vision is too far. You use the words rightly, so don't be loose in your character to just go and bring a third party and start judging him. And you look at the book of Genesis, it was God's idea. It was not village people idea, it was not city people idea. God has the 
uh, answer to the questions in marriage. So if you despise God's answers, you are set for unending shame and frustration in marriage. It is sin, I thought, as a Christian. I felt <laughs> you feel a lot of desire and feeling towards your husband and you have uh, that sexual desire is more. I felt it is a spirit of lust. You are a homemaker. You have to build your home. Atmosphere of love. Don't forget what the sister said. Heartfelt NS continues. Is that what you said? Yes. Continues. Prayer. Say, Pastor, I've been praying. Now it's the sixth year I'm praying for my mother in law. She never changed. She's like, she's like that scripture that says, Jesus Christ the same yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, that's your Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today. My mother in law the same yesterday, today, and forever. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> we, were, we, were, we were teaching BTS students. I would never forget that. And, and I told them, if you, when you said it did not work, that was when it stopped working. Before then, it was working. When you said it did not work, you aborted the spiritual process. You stopped the power in which you are put to work. Write it down. Never forget this. Whenever you act on any scripture, things are happening that you cannot see. Whenever you act on any one of God's instruction, things are happening that you cannot see. Things are happening that you cannot see. Are you here? Just because you cannot see it, doesn't mean that it is not happening. And then you carry that your holy lips. And say to your brother or sister in Christ, I have confessed so. I have acted. Nothing is working. When you said nothing is working, the whole process is like, <laughs> you have to start it all over again. Many people are like that. They confess God's word and finally unconfess it. They confess it again and finally unconfess it and nothing is now working because how can it work you start and stop how can it move hello you start a vehicle the vehicle starts and you said it's not working it's not working in my own case very funny I used to drive a wonderful vehicle when you start it everybody in the lane knows so everybody in the lane knows that the, that the vehicle has started. I mean, car has started. So God bless I and my wife with a new car. So when I started this one, the whole lane did not know. <laughs> it was very calm. Hello? I said, Pa, it's so soft. It started. Ta -da -da -ta, it started. And when I'm sitting on it, I don't know if it was on or off. But the other one, the first one I was sitting, it goes like this. <laughs> if, you, if you play a song, you can give nine steps. <laughs> you know, you just hear it because it's always shaking. And sometimes when you put the reverse, it will ask you, Oh, you want to go backwards? <laughs> the car is that one. Because you see, when you put reverse, you still be going forward. Then, then, then you now say, Hello! <laughs> Oh, you want to go backwards? Okay, okay. <laughs> the car is like that. No, I, I told you about this because when you put God's word to work, you don't look at the wrong place. You don't look at your feeling. Just like the car we got, myself and my wife, as a gift. When, you, when we turn on the car, it doesn't look as it's on because the car we used to have, when you turn it on, everything shakes. You know, so we know it's on. We know it's on, so you put it in gear one and we move now because the car is on. But this, when you turn this one on, <laughs> silent. Hello? Yes. But doesn't it mean it's not working. Yes. Tell the neighbor, because you cannot see it, you see it. with your optical eyes, your optical eyes. Doesn't, mean doesn't mean it's not working. It's not Just like the farmer 
puts the seed and comes back to see. He's supposed to follow the timing of that seed, right? Yes. There are different types of seeds. There are some seeds that will not come out for many days, some only three days, some even hours they sprout, you know? So it depends. And the farmer now applies very bad. What did I say? Very bad. Because the neighbor farm, everything has come up. The farmer now wants to apply. Say, uh, when did you plant your this thing? He said, we planted three days ago. Huh? Mine is five days. Huh? And two seeds are not the same. That the farmer is not considering. He's just considering, when did you plant three days ago? When did I plant? Five days ago. For what? What's happening? Did you put water? Yes, I did. I put water every day. Then what happened? The question that you were supposed to ask is, what kind of seed did you sow? This fellow sowed corn seed, and his thing is sprouted, but you are not sowing corn seed. You are sowing some other thing. That doesn't take that few, that, that, that time. And he now opens it. When you open it, what happens? You have to start the process again. Many Christians are that way. They speak it. So about to come out, they open it as the sun hits it, that's all. As the sun ray comes on that, that's all, it's gone. And so they put it again. The same thing, they put it again. So don't you feel that because you're praying for your mother-in-law five years now, hello, you are doing the work of the ministry five years towards your mother-in-law, and you're not seeing any change. And you say, it's nothing is happening. My mother-in-law is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you say so, Satan will say, that's it. Because she forever be my daughter. She should not come to that kingdom of your way, of your father. Be committed to the work of the ministry. Hello? Give yourself to it. And you will see it work for you. You see people, can I tell you something, most especially? Jesus is coming, every one of us. A stain you see on me. And a stain I see on you. Is our ministerial responsibility. Dogs are not wiser than human beings, true or false. Mm. Yet they use common sense. They see it on their friend's body, they go clean it. We see it, we say, Sister, I like you, that's why I want to say it, because, you know, if I don't say it, if I keep it in my heart, it, it will not be. You are talking too much. Can I say it or should I leave it? And I say, if you don't want me to say, if you, if you, I will just leave it. If you don't want me to, I, 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 how will the dog feel when the dog say, go and meet the dogs of the second cross? If you want me to say, I, your tail has some uh, dirt. If you don't want me, if you don't want me to touch it, I will leave it. You see the need, you meet the need. You don't talk about the need. Hello, you see the need, you meet the need. How? A ministry. Now, the time has come. I like it when the Bible says the time has come. This means it's about to happen now. The time has come. In this church, you have people sitting next to you. They must have spoken to you. Some, they didn't speak to you. You noticed it. Hello? It's time. It is. Bow your head and pray. Hello and welcome to the prayer session of Atmosphere of Love. It's time to pray. Whatever you don't like, whatever you do not, that doesn't go along with the Word of God, you command it. In the name of Jesus, you command it to stop. You know, I remember when the Bible says, when Jesus was teaching the Beatitudes, and He says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Are you merciful? Those things that's happening in your life, those things that happen to your loved ones, are you merciful? Those things that happen between you and your loved ones, are you merciful? I say this today, be merciful. 
Jesus said, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for everyone under the influence of the words of life in this program today. I declare your word upon their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the peace of God that passes all understanding keep their hearts and mind in Jesus' name. Let it keep their hearts and mind in Jesus' name. Everyone that is struggling to forgive and mercy, mercy, I speak your mercy into their situation. Struggling to forgive, struggling to let go, struggling to accept certain things the way they are in their lives, in their families, in their relationship right now. I speak that you be released in the name of Jesus Christ and you do the word of God and you act the word of God. You forgive that loved one. You will forgive whatever they have done to you. I pray for those who are in situations where only your mercy can pull them out court case, legal matters. They are in terrible situation right now. I, Father, I pray and lift them up to you. I demand that the name of Jesus will produce mercy in their case. Mercy in their case. That legal situation, that legal matter, whether it's land, house, property, or even crime, I speak the name of Jesus to bring mercy into that situation. The name of Jesus, mercy into that situation. All you out there who need mercy, I command, in Jesus' name, let the mercy of God speak for you. Let the mercy of God speak for your situation. Let the mercy of God speak for your family. Let the mercy of God speak for that child. Let the mercy of God locate you right now. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Saints, when we pray, we know God hears us. And Jesus said, thank you for hearing me, Father, in the tomb of Lazarus. We know God hears us when we pray according to his will. So we know God has touched you. God has changed your situation. Write us. Use the details that the announcer will give to you. Write us and share your testimony. One testimony will prove that Jesus is who he says he is in the Bible, what he claims to be. Until I come your way tomorrow, this is Apostle Edmund saying, Jesus is Lord. Thank you for watching Atmosphere of Love. We know you have been blessed. To partner with us, use the details now showing on the screen. Jesus is Lord.